everyone. This is our 16th art lesson, second to last because this is the last week of school. It's so exciting. So today you might need a little bit more help from a parent than usual in some of our lessons because today we're gonna to be using an iron. So today we're gonna to make some wax melts that I'm gonna do mine on wax paper and hang it up in the window. So this is what wax paper looks like. Maybe you've done some, some cooking with it, some baking. So we're gonna have some crayon on here and melt it. And when you hang it up in the window, see how wax paper is a little bit see-through? You can still see my shirt through it even though I'm holding it up. So that's why we're gonna use wax paper. This would be really cool in your window. And of course, I will hang mine up out front so you can come by and see it. So for today's lesson, you need wax paper. I have two sheets here. They're the same size. You could really make any size you want. You could have a little circle like that big. You could do a heart. You could do a little square. You could do a diamond. You could do a big rectangle. You could spell your name. You could do a rainbow. That would be really cool. So I'm using two big square sheets because I'm gonna have mine cover the whole page. So since it's gonna be in your window, it's a sun catcher, which means when you have a sun catcher in your window, you'll hang it up and the sun comes through and it's like your artwork is like catching the light. So I'm gonna make mine really big because we have a lot of big windows, but maybe if you wanted to hang it in your bedroom, if you have a smaller window, you could make it smaller, kind of like an ornament for your window. So I've got my two pieces of wax paper. You need crayons and you need a pencil sharpener like this. So the automatic kind won't work. You need one that, that can come apart like this that you can crank the crayons through because we're going to be using the shavings. And you also need an iron. This part's used at the very end, so you can probably do it for a while on your own. So first, I'm gonna take my second piece of wax paper off, and I just have this one down. Now I'm also gonna put a towel underneath because I'm ironing on this table. So I'm gonna lay my wax paper down. I'm gonna take my pencil sharpener, and I'm gonna choose a crayon that I wanna use. I wanna use this orange first. So I don't want any of the paper part. So since these crayons are new, they've all got this thick paper on them. So I'm just peeling off the paper on my crayon. All right, so you don't have to peel the whole crayon, but that's how much I peeled. So then I've got my pencil sharpener. Mine has two holes. One is actually for the crayon and one's for the pencil. You could use either one. So this is what I'm gonna be making my picture of. And I think I want mine to be maybe a rainbow. So, the term gradient is an art term, and gradient is when one shade is fading into the other. So if I have orange and red kind of go into each other, we talked about this when we talked about color mixing. So a gradient would be if I added yellow in front. Do you see how there's a scale from yellow to red? Orange adds in the gradient, because if these were all melted together, they would make one smooth transition. So that's what a gradient is. Kind of like the shaving cream activity did with Miss Leslie. So I wanna make mine a gradient, so my colors are gonna blend into each other. So I'm first gonna start with my orange, and I'm gonna take my sharpener, and it's actually gonna have to go on the crayon side. So I'm just shaving out some colors here. You don't have to do a ton of crayon, but I'm gonna do like one line of orange over here. All right, so there's a lot of orange like left over in my pencil sharpener, so you just wanna make sure you shake that all out so it's ready for your next color. So my orange crayon is done. I'm gonna put him off to the side. Next, I'm gonna go for red. So again, I'm just gonna peel the crayon. All right, so I'm just peeling it up to there. I'm gonna go back to my sharpener and I'm gonna get kind of close to the orange. 
So I'm not going right on top, but see how over here, there's a little bit of orange, a little bit of red, and then over here, it's gonna be all red. Now the empty space just means that that's the, the crayon melts and it's gonna fill up the space. And maybe where there's some empty space, the crayon won't be, and that's where the sun is gonna come through on the sun catcher. So that is totally okay. So I've got my red, I'm shaking out my sharpener. Looks pretty good. So now I'm thinking of the color wheel. Looks like I got some paper in here too. And I'm gonna think of a color that goes good with my, this is a violet red actually, so it's a little bit pink in it. So I think I'm gonna go for a light pink. So I'm just gonna get my pink crayon ready here. So I'm gonna go back with my shaver and I'm gonna add a pink line. I'm gonna make my pink line a little bit curved. So there's pink. So now I'm gonna take my pink crayon, set it aside. And a good color that goes with pink is purple. So I'm gonna peel my purple crayon back. This time I'm gonna peel a little bit more than I did before. because I was starting to get some of the paper when I did my shavings. All right, so I've peeled a little bit more of my purple crayon. Go back to my shaver. I don't want a ton of purple because it is kind of a darker color on my sheet with my gradient. So I think that's enough purple. The next color in my gradient could be blue because purple is made from blue and red. So this would be a good addition to our gradient. All right, so I've got my blue, I've got my sharpener. All right, there's blue. The last color I'm gonna do is gonna be green. So I'm gonna choose a light green and I'm just gonna peel my crayon. So this is my last color, so I'm gonna try and go to the edge of my wax paper. All right, so here's my gradient of my colors. I do feel like yellow is missing. So I'm gonna add some yellow right by the beginning where I had orange. So that's gonna be my last color. Maybe I'm gonna add some yellow by the green because it's like the end of my gradient. All right, here's my gradient. So something I saw online is some people added white on top because when we use the iron with this, it's just gonna melt. So when white melts, you guys know this with white paint, it makes a color lighter. So if I have blue and white, like this kind of blue, it's gonna make light blue. So I think that I'm just gonna add a little bit of white on top just to see what it looks like. So I'll give you that visual and you can decide if you want it on yours. And I'm just gonna add some white over the whole thing. I'm not doing a whole lot, but I think it'll be enough to make a difference and show you. I'm gonna add more by the yellow. All right, so now I'm gonna take my wax paper and I'm gonna cover my first sheet. So I did it really smoothly so nothing comes off. So now I've got my iron. This is the part where you're gonna need help. And I'm gonna go over my wax. Wow. It's really looking so cool. I'm loving how the white is turning out actually. So I would recommend that to you guys. So I'm just gonna go over this a couple times until it looks like all of my shavings are melted. 
And I'm going kind of slow so it doesn't crumple up my design. This kind of reminds me of those fuse beads that you guys might be doing at home where you have the little palette and the beads and you iron them together. I'm doing that with some of the kids I babysit. It's kind of a similar activity. All right, I'm just gonna go over this a couple more times. I just see a few crayon shavings that I wanna get all melted. All right, there is the end of my wax art. I think it looks so cool like this. You can flip it over and it's, it looks a little bit different on this side. So we've got this side and this side. So I think I'm gonna add some, just some clear tape along the edges. So over here, over here, and at the top. You could also just staple the corners. So that way the two sheets of wax paper will stay together. So here's what it looks like when there's some light coming through. So when we had it down here, when I was showing you, there wasn't any light coming through because it was on my table. But here I've got some light coming through. You can see how it's got some blending colors. So here, if we look at my gradient in my rainbow, we can see that the green blends into the blue, the blue blends into the purple, purple into the pink, and so on. So that's how we create a rainbow gradient. All right, I hope you enjoy this art project. Send me pictures of your completed work.